Hey guys, my name is Siege, and today we're going to rip into cinematics and rust and go over everything from setting up your own cinematic servers to all the commands you could possibly need to achieve cinematic perfection. If you've ever wondered how Frost or Stevie can pull off cinematics like this. Or like this. Was it fun while it lasted? Whew absolutely then stick around to the end of the video as always if you like the video like the video and smash that subscribe button let's go ahead and dive on in so the first thing you're going to need is a server that you have admin access on for this we're going to go over to gameserverkings.com and purchase a server using the code siege during checkout. As you can see, this will give you 20% off of your Rust server purchase. Now that we purchase the server, Game Server Kings has to initialize it and start it up, and this generally takes a minute. So to fill that gap, here's a sneak peek of the next base coming in early November. Now, we'll go into our client area and take note of our TC admin username as well as the TC admin password. I would also go ahead and write down all of your Archon information as well as you will need this to perform console commands later on. Okay, we're going to go open up our TC admin game control panel down here and log in using those credentials that we just wrote down. Over here on the left, go ahead and click on game services and now we are on our server homepage. If the server isn't stopped already, go ahead and hit this stop button right here. Okay, now that we're sure that it's stopped, we can go ahead and add our plugins to the server. Now I have a couple recommendations that I'll link down in the description. Some are paid, some are not. These are the Chaos Code Skin Box, the Chaos Code Preferred Environment, and then the UMod plugins B Grade by Ryan, Metabolism by Orange, Disable Temperature Functions by Orange, No Decay by OX89A, as well as Removing Default Radiation by Kill You, and whatever else you feel might be useful to make your cinematic life easier. So let's go ahead and install one of these. We will start with B Grade by Ryan. First, we will go into our Oxide folder, and from there, we will go into Plugins. Here, we will click Upload, and then we will just simply drag the file that we want into the upload. Simple as that. Whenever the server starts, you'll be able to change your config files, but don't start it just yet. First, we have to pick a map. For ease of use, we will go over to rustmaps.io and find something that we want. I want a mill tons map or a mill tons in the snow, so I will select that. Then I will select 3500 for map size. If you want to make a custom map in Rust Edit, that is completely fine as well. On Game Server Kings, just make sure that your Dropbox link is just dot map and not dot map question mark dl equals zero or dl equals one is it just doesn't work with game server kings all right so now that we have all of our plugins in our map you might think that we're ready to go but not really because there's just one more thing that we have to do go ahead and start up your server and once it's up and running go into archon using that information i told you to write down and write the following command owner id your steam 64 id and then write write cfg to write to the config file so that it remembers it the next time you reboot your server. Sweet. Now you have your server up and running and you have admins so you can do all of the cool cinematic commands that you want to do. But you might be asking, what commands do I use? Don't worry, I got you. So instead of doing this the boring way by me telling you a list of commands, let's do it the fun way. Remember that Stevie clip from the beginning? Was it fun while it lasted? Whew. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and create a one for one version of that. Let's get started. So first, load into your server using the IP found on your game server king's server homepage and find a sweet god rock somewhere on the map. This should do right here. All right, now that you have a god rock, go ahead and spawn yourself a kit, some ammo, and use either your skins or skin box to set up your kit. Now, we're gonna get up on our rock. To do that, we have to go into our F1 console by pressing F1 on your keyboard and type no clip. Now that we are on our rock and ready to go, we will go into our F1 console and type debug camera to get a general idea of what our shot will look like. Cool. Now we will type debug camera again to get it out of it. Next, we will type demo.record rock scene. It should say something to the effect of recording on the bottom left side of your screen. And now we just act. I will fire off a couple of shots to make it look real. 
All right, that should do. Now I will type stop in F1 and stop the demo. At this point, I can go ahead and disconnect from the server as I don't need to be on it anymore. And I will instead go over to the film reel on the right hand side of my screen and press this little play button right here. This will load your demo. So first thing we're gonna do is type demo.timescale0 into our console and this will stop the demo entirely. Timescale is the passing of time within the demo, so multiplying that by zero means that our demo is not moving. We can scale the time of our demo by this parameter as well. So say I want it in half speed, I will just type 0.5, easy. But now we will go back to zero. And I would also like to recommend that you bind this to some keys. Let's bind O to time scale zero and P to time scale one. That way we can just start and stop our demo with O and P. Next, we will bind demo.skip. Demo.skip either jumps forward by the amount of time you select or backwards if you enter it as a negative number. So for this, I will enter bind 8, skip 5, and bind 9, skip negative 5. This will allow us to jump around in the demo timeline. Now of course, if you want the HUD, you can type demo.hud1, and honestly this is a great option. However, since we are recording on OBS, we can leave that on zero. All right, so now we have all of our baseline commands set up, and as you can see, my camera is moving around mighty fast and is turning very quickly, and that isn't very cinematic whatsoever. The speed and turn of the camera is dictated by cam speed and cam lerp commands respectively. By default, I change cam speed to 0.05 and cam lerp to 0.01 so that it looks much more smooth and fluid. So, now we are ready to film, right? Not just yet. Why don't we set up a cool environment? Let's go ahead and make it dawn. So we will manipulate the admin time. A reminder, admin commands are a client side command, which means it will only work in your demo file. Don't try and use them on your server. Just use the usual SV weather commands. Let's go with admin time eight for now. Next, I will add a little fog. So I will do admin fog 0.15 and wind through the grass would look cool as well. So admin wind one will get some gusts going. Last, some cinematic rain always helps. So I will type in admin rain one. Easy, we are certainly ready to film, right? Wrong again. Next, we have to set up our depth of field or DOF. First, we have to turn depth of field on in the menu right here. Our first command will be DOF underscore apper. This refers to the aperture. Basically, the smaller the value, the wider the field of focus. This is good for big fights or bases. And then the larger the value, the smaller the area of focus. Good for solo type stuff. So for our guy on the rock right here, we'll probably set it a little high. Let's just try six for right now. Our next command is DOF blur. This refers to the amount of blur in the scene. For this, we will also use six. As a good rule of thumb, you want them to be about equal. Now, if you're too lazy for all this, we can use autofocus. To do this, type DOF mode zero. However, I feel like the results from this are you know, kind of iffy. Sometimes they're really good and sometimes they aren't. So I generally just keep it on manual. To switch back, type DOF underscore one. You can also use target mode. To do this, type DOF underscore mode two. You can also use DOF underscore focus underscore looking at while looking at someone to lock onto them. But when you do this, be sure to turn the focal distance down to zero, which is DOF underscore focus underscore dist. You can use this to create some cool shots where you focus first on the foreground and then on the background. And you could also bind focal distance to a scroll wheel to achieve this without moving. Bind focus nudging to your scroll wheel so that you can manually change the focus in the scene. This command is DOF underscore nudge and it changes the focus distance by small amounts. For now, I'll bind it to my mouse wheel using mouse wheel up DOF underscore nudge two and bind mouse wheel down DOF nudge minus two. At the end of the day, if you want to ensure that you are getting the right things blurred out, just use the command DOF debug one. This takes you into an entirely black and white screen where the black areas are in focus and the white areas are out of focus. Okay, one last step before we start our shoot. You might notice this looks like complete ass. 
and that is true. When I record, I use the worst settings possible to help my PC out. However, inside the demo, we can change basically everything, including the two parameters that will change the way that our demos look forever. These are the tricks to how Frost and Stevie make their videos look so good. So we'll get to that in a second, but for now, let's go ahead and jack all of our graphics up to max, except for parallax and any, er, sorry, any isotropic filtering. On the next page, select TSAA, and then all options except for the vignette and motion blur. Last page, do everything but pedal support. Cool. Now you might notice that the trees still look like shit, but the AK in my hands is a little blurry. Not a problem. Let's fix those. When we go into settings, you might notice that tree quality only goes up to 100. That's funny because if I type tree quality 1000 into console, it works and the trees look drastically better. Same thing goes with the AK as well as small little parts around the map. This is especially noticeable when you look at ice on ice lakes. What you're going to do is type LOD bias 5. What you'll notice is that there's a significantly more detailed AK or ice lake, whatever you're looking at. Everything is way more detailed. This is because LOD bias refers to level of display. So it just jacks the graphical quality through the roof. Now don't use this on an actual server as it will tank the literal shit out of your frames. And last but not least, I don't just want to see rocks close to me. I want to see grass and rocks way the fuck away from me. So I will use the command grass.distance200 to override the default value of 100. Now we are ready for our shot. So let's get the camera set up right here. Now we will just be doing a basic pan camera movement, which is just a lateral camera movement. So now we are ready to go. So let's practice one time. Let's use time scale zero to stop our clip. Let's backtrack all the way to the start using skip negative five. Now, once we are ready, let's hit time scale one and record our clip. It looks awesome. Now, how do you record in OBS? Well, that is the next part of this video. All right, so here we are in OBS. This is going to be a very quick and simple tour of how to work OBS for Rust. So let me get this out of the way. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, as you can see, we are recording over here on our right hand side of the screen. And what is happening is we have a audio input capture. This is capturing my microphone. And then on the left hand side here under sources, we have a display capture. Namely, this one is display capture two, which is capturing OBS. So say we want to record Rust, we will set up a game capture. For that, you will just go under sources. You will hit this plus, we'll go to game capture, and then you will hit okay. Um, for this, you want the mode to be capture any full screen application and you will want it to capture cursor and that is it honestly so we will do that um, we'll go over here into settings we'll go ahead and get started here so in terms of general nothing needs to change here we can just leave it that way for stream we aren't streaming so we're gonna leave that blank again not streaming for output leaving that blank so we're gonna go over into recording type we'll just use standard recording path set this to the place that you want all your recordings stored I have a massive hard drive that takes all my recordings so I set them to go there for recording format we use MKV basically we'll what this does is if your OBS crashes mid recording, MKV at least saves the progress on your recording up to that point. Whereas if you use MP4 or anything else like that, you will lose all of your video. So I heavily recommend MKV. And at the end, I will show you how to remux the recording so that you can use them as MP4. So audio track, we're just gonna use audio track one. Encoder, I use NVIDIA NVENC. This is specifically for NVIDIA graphics cards. So if you have anything else, you'll probably have to use a CPU encoder. For rescaling output, we're not gonna do this here. We will do it in the video settings. Next, our rate control. We will be using VBR or variable variable bitrate. Sorry about that. Um, the bit, bit rate will be between 25,000 kilobytes per second and 40,000. This comes after a lot of studying. I found that above 40,000 kilobytes per second, there isn't a noticeable gain on the investment that we're making in terms of just processing power. So we keep this down to 40,000 kilobytes per second so that we can do other things like play Rust. For keyframe intervals, we're doing zero. Preset, we're doing quality. If you set it to max quality, it will quite literally cut your OBS frames in half. So I heavily recommend using quality. And then for profile we use high. For look ahead and sake of visual tuning we'll just turn these off as their hit to processing power is just too much. For GPU we're using zero and then for max B frames we're using two. Next we go into our audio settings here under output. So we are recording to track one and to get the best sound physically possible we will be maxing 
out our audio bit rate. So we record with a 320 audio bit rate. Text and audio, nothing's really changing here. This is just where we can select all of our outputs. So this is my headset and then uh, my mic should be selected here. I'm not sure why it isn't, but it should be. And then nothing else is used. For video here, as you can see, our base canvas resolution is 2560 by 1440. Our output or scaled resolution is 1920 by 1080. And to get this, they use a downscale filter. In this case, it is by Cubic, which uses 16 samples. Basically, all this is doing is downscaling it into this resolution. This is much more efficient in terms of processing than the option in output right here. So we use this one instead. And then our common FPS value, we leave a 60. This is because if we want to go through slow motion recordings or something like that, we want to have more frames to use so it doesn't look choppy. Um, in terms of hotkeys, I just have my start and stop recordings bound so I don't have to go in here and click every single time or alt tab out of rust every five seconds. For advanced, nothing is changing here. So just keep all of it the same. And that is OBS. Well, that's honestly it. I really appreciate you guys for sticking it through to the end of this video and of course thank you for the 5,000 subscribers it is insane to see that we've gotten to this point and i just i can't wait to see where this channel goes from here so thanks again for the support i will see you in the next one